um, I would like to <coughs> produce a culturally Hegelian video by um, mixing together modern pop culture, um, religion, <coughs> and um, philosophy. And I just had a thought by thinking about Rousseau and Robespierre. Um, there's a <clears throat> there's a French author um, a French author <clears throat> um, Charles Peggy, who was a, a Catholic uh, patriot who died in World War I and a writer who said many intelligent and spiritual things. I guess I've never read any of his books, but one of his famous quotes is that the philosophy of Kant, Kantism, uh, has clean hands or pure hands, but it has no hands. I don't know that, <clears throat> I'm not sure that um, that's the, the good translation, but the idea is that basically says that Kant's, Immanuel Kant, Immanuel Kant's moral philosophy is pure, it has clean hands, but the ends are so pure that they do not exist. So basically it's, it's his way of saying that Kant's morality, the idea of the imp, Im, uh, impera categorical imperative that one should do one's duty regardless of the consequences, is so pure that it cannot possibly exist. And uh, <clears throat> Kant, in the realm of philosophy, is the most moral uh, philosopher ever. Uh, his morality is sublime. And that's why Kant has had such a tremendous influence upon ethical philosophy for the past 200 years because it is sublime but it is frightening also and there's a very famous example if uh, uh, it's always with the Nazis and never with the communists but if you are hiding a Jew in your house and there's a Nazi who come knocking on your door and asks uh, have you seen a Jew uh, the moral action would be to say no to protect the Jew but the Keynesian action would be to say one should not lie and so you should speak the truth to the Nazi officer and the Jew would be deported. So a can, uh, um, an, an action which is morally good from the point of view of Kant creates uh, frightening consequences in reality. And, and I thought about this because Robespierre was said to be incorruptible, was said to be a highly uh, moral man and his action in the political realm produced uh, dramatic consequences and um, um, I will put a link to a, a scene from The Dark Knight Rises the dialogue between um, Robin and and commissar um, L lieutenant uh, officer I don't know Gordon James Gordon when he says uh, your your hands look pretty filthy to me uh, he said I, I wanted to 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 keep my hands clean and he says he, the, Robin responds your hands look pretty filthy to me and there's Bane who reveals the the deception of Gordon <sighs> that's a moral conflict and my whole worldview consists in, in trying to, to show to others and to myself that the deepest philosophical truth which are philosophical conflicts are made manifest in modern pop culture not only but it can be made intelligible in modern pop culture and this scene the, 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 the conflict between 
uh, the end of, of the Dark Knight with uh, the lie about Harvey Dent and, and um, the Dark Knight Rises with Bane and, and Commissar Gordon and, and Batman and, and, and Robin and uh, the, the, the lie that brought relative stability to Gotham. It's a profound moral conflict and these moral conflicts exist in the history of philosophy. And um, I would like to make the connection uh, by quoting a passage from this book, In God's Image, by Gerhard Meisenberg, who is a, a socio-biologist. I think he's Jewish. I don't know, but I think he's, he has Jewish origins. And he talks about Heinrich Himmler. So I, I think that's a Jew talking about Himmler from the perspective of evolutionary sociobiology in the chapter Good and Evil. So he's a materialist, atheist, who, ri who writes uh, in God's image in the title of his book, but that's one of God's ironies that uh, the greatest atheistic scientists keep referring to God unconsciously because I guess that's God's way of making uh, <clears throat> spiritual humor. Uh, he says, Himmler shows us an easier way to transgenerational altruism, group identity or ethnocentrism. So the question is how, in the context, for instance, of the ecological crisis, how should we uh, uh, impel or, or give a, 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 a will or a, um, an urge for humans to act morally by thinking about the consequences of their action, not in their immediate present, not even for their children, not even for their grandchildren, but for the well-being of generations in the next hundred years, but more than that, in, 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 in a, an indeterminate amount of time to act so that one's action will not harm the well-being of the planet, which means the capability of other human beings to live and reproduce and sustain life for for many thousands hundreds of thousands millions of years so it's uh, the ecologists are confronted with this moral di dilemma how to promote a morality which extend beyond uh, immediate uh, it means even beyond the the, the the next 20 years because when you act in favor of your children you think Unconsciously, you think long term. You, you, when you educate your child, you you think for his well-being for the next at least eighteen years or the, the next twenty years. So, there can be morality in the range of twenty years, or or maybe thirty years for the the most far-sighted. But how to extend morality to hundreds and thousands of years in the future, and not only for the self or for one's family or for one's country, but for the whole of mankind. How do you uh, create such a morality? That's a question, that's a question of ethical philosophy by which ecologists are confronted. And one of the answer from evolutionary psychology brought forth by Meisenberg in the case of Himmler is that keen selected love requires a real or imagined personal bond, but solidarity with one's group can be extended to everyone who is perceived as a group member, even sons and grandsons. Himmler was no sociopath who discounted the distant consequences of his actions in favor of immediate gain. On the contrary, he discounted not the future, but the present. He imposed suffering here and now for the prospect of a distant paradise. He valued decency and honor and was as attached to our culture and his people's sons and grandsons as others are to their closest friends or to little kittens. Whatever standards we apply, that's from a sociobiologist of a probably Jewish origin. He says, whatever standard we apply, Himmler was not less but more moral than the rest of us. Are you getting my point? High morality is not something we should aim at, but something we must guard against. 
petty evil is done out of selfishness, but the great greatest evils known to history, by the example of Himmler, have been committed by high-spirited idealists. Morality is the fuzzy emotional stuff that gives us bizarre ideas and makes us do weird things. So, Robespierre was morally uh, pure, uh, as pure as one can be, but he was a political monster, not in spite of his morality, but because of his morality. And the same goes with Himmler, which was even worse. And I, I don't know much about English history, but I guess that uh, Cromwell uh, was, uh, I don't know, I don't know Cromwell enough, but I guess that he was partly uh, morally, um, I would say, superior. I, I, I don't know, I don't know the, the story of his life, but I guess that he was morally inspired and he was, he committed crimes also. And, um, The idea that I've just realized is that morality, in a sense of, of doing a right, a righteous action, is, is, is frightening. And, and relative good, good mediocrity, like evil mediocrity, are reassuring. It's very easy to be simply evil by being selfish and greedy. Everyone is partly evil. And, and everyone is partly good also. Uh, everyone can act out of kindness and generosity and solidarity and help one another and, 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 uh, and sacrifice a part of his well-being for the good of others. So everyone is balanced between relative um, wickedness and relative goodness. There are very few uh, psychopaths who are uh, really evil and they are scary. But there are also very few relative moralists, and they too are very scary. And honestly, I don't know... Um, uh, how should I explain this? The only purely uh, moral man I ever I can think of, a man who was really morally pure, was of course Jesus, because Kant wrote about moral purity, but was he really morally pure in his life? I guess he was more moral than most, but uh, he, w he had an ordinary life. Jesus was a, a purely moral character, and if there ever was one man who was morally pure, it was Jesus. And when I look deep into myself, I see dark aspects in my psyche. And, and I, there is evil in me. I, I know that I am the negative from a philosophical standpoint. And when I look deep within my soul, I can find evil. And I'm afraid of my own evil. But I cannot find goodness in the sense that I have done many good, relatively good actions in my everyday life. I, I, am, I am polite and, and, and I can help others in my empirical life. And um, I'm, I'm an averagely good person from an empirical standpoint. But I cannot think of myself as acting out of pure, untainted, disinterested uh, duty. I, I cannot imagine doing good uh, in the Kantian way. To, to, to act out of pure morality without regard for the consequences uh, just for the sake of duty, that is something I, I cannot understand. But pr precisely because I am evil, that's why I can't understand. 
And uh, except for Jesus, I cannot think of any man who had no ulterior motive than just being morally good and pure. And um, yeah. So the idea that I've just understood is that that good, whether in the realm of sociobiology or in the in the realm of 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 um, religion, real good, pure morality is frightening. And uh, <clears throat> there's another um, person who is morally pure that I can think of. And since I'm a cultural Hegelian, it will not come as a surprise that it's a, a character drawn from pop culture. Uh, it's Batman, of course. Batman is Jesus uh, made um, manifest in comic books and movies. And um, if there e ever was... <laughs> the problem with Batman is that he does not exist. <laughs> That's like Kant. Batman is morally pure, but he only lacks existence. But the two morally pure um, persons I can think of are Jesus and Batman. And even Batman in The Dark Knight, uh, he betrays morality by, by saying that truth isn't good enough. Sometimes people deserve more. But in The, in the, in the Dark Knight Rises, he restores a sense of moral uh, purity by sacrificing himself. And I've always found that the, the end of the movie would kind of ruined the plot because Batman was supposed to be dead. He was not supposed to have a date with mm. Selina Kyle that uh, he was supposed to, to die out of pure moral action. So yeah, Batman and Jesus. And uh, the only, the idea that I've just understood is that um, radical good is as frightening as radical evil. Both are frightening. And, and the reason why most 98% of mankind are morally oscillating between mediocre good and mediocre evil. That's probably a bell curve, I guess. There are people who are very good and those who are very evil, but they all have good and or evil within them. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> 